Dina, we are here in Prague and you had a very nice tournament that you played, you streamed and you also created some content around this event. How was your experience? It was amazing. Honestly, I had a great time. I had really great tournaments. I enjoyed my games. I played I played several games on 98% accuracy. I beat a feeder master. I made a draw against a grandmaster. And I also had like really good content quality time. Like I live streamed my games on both my Twitch channel, my YouTube channel. The viewership was really nice. And I did my recap videos, you know, it's and I spent I spent some time in a really good company of my colleagues and chess players and organizers were here just so nice. It's definitely one of the best experiences. And I you know with this tournament I slowly started to realize how much more I like playing the events where my community can actually watch my games live and follow me. Whereas, you know, just like extremely like pure competitive chess where we're not necessarily allowed to put any streaming device into the playing hall. Right. You know, I, I saw you here in person, but I have seen so much of your content online as an interviewer, as a player, as a content creator and so on. Uh, I want to understand more about you. Uh, you. You are a WGM, you are a strong player. I know that your mother is a chess coach because when we did a video on Anish, we realized she was Anish's first chess trainer. Could you tell us a bit about your uh, sort of childhood, your background of chess, uh, where, where were you born and how your chess journey began? That's correct. So I um, come from St. Petersburg, Russia, and uh, my mom is a chess coach up to today. You know, it's like an institution for sports in Russia and she taught me how to play chess when I was three and then I started competing at five and then indeed Anish came to our club at uh, when he was seven and believe it or not, but at that time, at that time I was still beating him. Wow. Yeah, well obviously because I started earlier, so uh, well slowly he started catching on, but yeah, um, I do come from a, um, a country and a city that has a huge chess culture and just the fact that my mom has been a chess coach for like 35 years it definitely means a lot. Um, I, um, I have been competing in um, Russian national championships until a certain point and uh, since the pandemic started I uh, decided to, I mean, the old tournaments were cancelled, so I decided to stream and realized I really loved it. So now I'm a f kind of like, I am a competitive chess player, but also chess content creator. So till pandemic, were you just focusing on chess, like playing chess? Yes, I've been playing in leagues, in championships, Russian national championships, European championships, uh, European club cups. Um, I even qualified for the World Cup through European chess championships. So uh, I played that and uh, I've been fully, fully focused on chess until I discovered streaming. But it was the right moment, you know, because all the tournaments were cancelled. And uh, it was um, it was Alexander Botes who hosted this tournament, Blitz tournament called Isolated Queens mm -hmm. back in March. I think it was March 23, 2020. And uh, I tried. And the well, the twist was that the prizes that were really nice prizes were only for female chess players who would also stream their games oh, wow. on Chess.com. So uh, I was like, wow, you can you can you know. Get some 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 decent living with, with with streaming chess. How is this possible? And then I but I actually really just love the interaction. I love building the community, and I think ever since that, to be honest with you, since March 23, 2020, every single day, my mind have been on how do I become better at this. Really? Yeah. So 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 would you say right now creating content and streaming? is more exciting and interesting to you than let's say improving at chess? I would put it this way. Um, chess is definitely my life and I love competing at chess but 
it has always been challenging for me to train chess. So whatever, let's say I set my chess goals as a competitor, those are not goals to, let's say, uh, become achieve this or that level. Those are goals to establish a training routine. And I gave it a try. Um, I gave it a try so many times in my life, but it requires so much discipline and passion. And when I discovered streaming, it was eye-opening for me on how much I did not see time going by, time passing by when I was working on, on content streaming. I could stream for five, six hours and like I wouldn't even see, like I wouldn't even realize that. So um, yeah, I think it was like a sign from somewhere like, you know, upper space that, that like this is what I should devote myself to. Although I do have my competitive chess goals, but I also realized that I don't get I don't get as much pleasure to from a game of chess uh, when I play it without the camera compared to when I play on camera. Just this power of people rooting for me, actually caring how I do is so inspiring. And I did notice in this tournament, and I had another like super successful tournament that I streamed last year in Reykjavik where I beat two grandmasters. Yes. You actually you beat Gajewski, I guess, yeah. and Simon Williams, was it? The second? Uh, no. No, second was um Erdos. Erdos Victor. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. from Hungary. That game was super complicated and I'll play uh, Victor many times in the game. Uh with Gajewski it was just the most like I don't I think he just got nuts with his king. Like it's hard for me to say if it was like my achievement or him. Um, but I I'm actually it was, I'm actually more proud about the game with Victor because that was like a 60-70 moves game. But when people like talk about me, they definitely remember the Gajewski game. Yes, and yeah. I think I it was also a very aggressive game that you yeah, played. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the guy just put his king on f7 and then on g6. What I was supposed to do? Of course, I sacrificed the, the bishop and then the, the knights. I, I just played the Russian school of chess, the Russian school of chess. Um, Whenever your opponent does not develop, you punish him. And that's what I did. <laughs> but I don't need to trash talk. I think, um, I guess getting back to my point is that the biggest difference that I can see now in comp when I play competitive chess versus before streaming is that I do not stress as much because I know regardless of the result, I, I'm gonna accomplish something. And I think previously when it was all, you know, about rating, not even like top chess players. Top chess players, they have this huge pressure. Hikaru said about this, told about this many times. And when the, he used to play, he had this financial pressure, right? Every game matters for your monthly mm. income. But for me, it was never the case because unfortunately, as you know, there is absolutely no income in women's chess professional. Only maybe if you're like top 10 to 20, you can make ends meet. But it's definitely way tougher for, for women chess players, which not so many uh, players talk about. So um, uh, now that I, like, my, my pressure was always only for my personal, like, performance rating performance as, as, a, as a competitor. And now it's definitely way easier. Like, this tournament has been a blast, honestly. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> yeah, this tournament is a blast for yeah. you. It's... Um... Amazing. I don't know if I answered your question. No, no, you did. Yeah. Uh, I saw you also interviewing. Yeah. Was that before the pandemic or after? That was after, definitely. I think uh, my... I mean, I, I actually started commentating chess tournaments before the boom. It was my first event that I covered. It was Beale Chess Festival 2019 and then I came back in 2020 but at that time I was already a streamer and then I commentated the Women's World Cup in Sochi in English. I commentated uh, Nepo versus Magnus World Chess Championship match in Russian for FIDE Russian Chess Channel. Um, that was, the, yeah, those were like really big events that I did and um, and then in 2022, I got the invitation to do interviews. It was for the Grand Prix series, all three of them for that season I did. And later I did the um, the candidates in Madrid. And um, I do have to say that I enjoyed common, 
uh, I enjoyed taking interviews more than commentating, definitely because of the, the possibility to interact with chess players and get to see their personality and also bring their best out of them and maybe somewhere, you know, um, provoke them. This is something which I personally found like, I don't know how to put it because I also interview. I found that you were so bold to ask some very tough questions to these players. How did you think of this kind of interviews where you would ask questions which were often, sometimes they would get offended a bit, sometimes they would be quiet and it would create a little bit of discomfort but it also brought so many so many people watch those interviews. So, you know, it's like your brand of interviewing. How did you think of it? I do have to give a huge credit to the organizers of the Grand Prix. It was World Chess. I think it was their um, idea in a way. They asked me, Dina, could you bring your personality in? We want to see you interviewing them and not like an interviewer asking questions. So I do think like the initial thought actually came from them. And then when I was given hands up, you know, to ask anything I wanted, then I obviously, you know, made it made it really wild. But but as a chess player, you also grew up watching these top players. Sometimes you have this awe of them. In order to ask them these questions, you need to break that kind of feeling of awe. It must not have been easy. What does that mean? Like you, you oh. kind of look at them and you are like, wow, these are great players. Should I ask these questions? Oh, yeah, no, I, I don't have any shame. <laughs> I, I, I think it's just my personality. I, I'm sometimes, I mean, I think it's also maybe somewhere like, you know, Russian mentality. Sometimes we are a bit too direct. So it can be um, it can be helping us just as hurting us so sometimes we come off as rude but it also helps you know daring doing things and yeah not breaking the stereotypes and all this you know um, politeness and, and barriers so I think it's a mix of everything it's probably a mix of my personality my background and I do, I did feel that most of the players what helped to me personally, just because as I've been around them like forever before I started streaming, I actually, most of the players I already knew mm. and I had this or that type of personal contact with them before. So probably they felt comfortable as well because they knew me personally. Brilliant. And now that you are into sort of content creation and you have a YouTube channel, I believe you also stream on Twitch. Um, how do you intend to sort of take this forward? Do you see playing tournaments and doing this sort of streaming live games and then creating content around it as a logical step forward? It's a great question, Sagar. Uh, it's the one that I ask myself every single day. <laughs> and I've been asking this question myself from the day one I started streaming. Um, so some things depend on trends some things depend on uh, testing what works and what does not right now everybody is so passionate to follow my competitive journey that basically every time i play competitive chess i stream and i make content out of it i make videos and i do hope that this continues so that I would be able to also accomplish my chess dreams you know like I have certain reading barriers that I want to break in I have certain titles that I want to accomplish like for example I have like um, four AM norms Ooh, wow. yeah so uh, I definitely do feel that I still have a lot of potential that I can and want to unleash is that the word yes. unleash and it would be a pity to to retire from competitive chess, you know, without, I, I wouldn't forgive myself. So if streaming can help me do that, you know, both um, through motivation, but also financial security, which I won't lie, is, is definitely a, like a, um, a great career to make in chess. I, I would be super grateful for that, but I do also want to promote the game 
among other girls and women. I want to be, you know, like a good role model for younger girls to see that you can and should like make a career in chess. You shouldn't drop out when, you know, your teenage years comes to college. So I would say my goal is to promote the game, to inspire younger generations of girls to get into chess. But of course, obviously, I do want to accomplish my own dreams. And I think it's just like with everything you do in life every day. I mean, I know it's going to sound goofy, but every day you want to be a better version of yourself. You want to become better at what you do, whereas it's creating YouTube videos or like making live stream or playing a chess game like just those wins that i had versus grandmasters obviously they show that i you know it's like i have my best sides and i have my worst sides so it's all about learning how to 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 do the best of what you do to give you more concrete answer on content i think short term i um um i hope this year me and my friends and colleagues, both the sisters, can come to India. That would be really great for our content. We would really love to discover such a chess, um, such a chess country, and that would be a great like YouTube and Twitch stream tour. And um, now you know, short content is blowing up, so I'm doubling on on short content. And actually, probably when this is released. Um, it's already going to be on, on, but I have been working on a project for a while, for the last like few months, and I'm about to release it. I think I can share it with you because I'm sure it's going to be already out. It's the Russian School of Chess. I have put together 25 years of my competitive play into one ultimate method that will make you finally learn how to play chess the right way it's a course it's a course it's a video it's, course it's a video course oh, wow. divided into three levels but it's also a learning community and i can guarantee that after going through this method you will start winning way more games than ever before and you'll just find your your chess atmosphere and chess people to hang out with Brilliant. Well, Dina, it was amazing to get to know you better. Uh, also, understand how you are sort of connecting your chess strength along with streaming capabilities. Uh, and I think um, in the years to come, I both can actually coexist, right, from what you are doing. Absolutely. I do have to say that, if I can take a bit more of your time. Yes. I do have to say that for me, I, I, I probably haven't mentioned it yet before, but for me, my channels, streaming, creating content, promoting chess is a personal project that I care so much. It's like my baby that I sometimes get really offended when people don't see the value that me and other people do for chess by, um, by creating content, by promoting chess. They, they don't see the value. Sometimes they are not like, for example, willing to cooperate or like judgmental or sometimes even jealous, you know. And uh, I really hope that in years to come that will change because like I do know that uh, chess is a very um, conservative society and um, um, we still have to do a lot of work to make people understand the real value of what we do, what I do, what you do, Sagar. And um, yeah, when, when professional chess players, I actually had it personally a lot with women, uh, with professional, other like professional chess players, like that, like sometimes I don't see people understanding what we do or valuing it. And, um, I, I really hope that, that this will change because I truly believe what we do is for the players on the first place, you know, to get people's eyes to chess, mm. to uh, bring more sponsors, to bring chess more exposure, to finally get chess to the TV as it should be. To, um, yeah, it's, um, it's a long journey. We've been doing it for what, like, how long have you been there? 
I, I started uh, around 2017 creating video content. So you've been there for seven years mm -hmm. and the womb started four years ago, three years ago, right? For, for the way that funded year. I, I still think we have a lot to do to make, to change people's minds. <laughs> Sometimes it's a challenge, but as I said, for me, it's, um, it's actually a personal challenge. So uh, I am, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to, you know, for more to come. And um, um, I cannot wait what chess will become in five or 10 years from now. And are there any players you would love to sort of make content with? Oh, that's a tough one. Prague. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying this because me and Sagar have been trying to brag, uh, to brag Prague to, to record the game, but, but he's definitely tired from the tournament. Let me see. I mean, obviously Magnus Carlsen. I never had a, um, a chance to, to challenge him. So Magnus, if you're watching this video, I'm daring you. No, I'm daring you. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you for a match. Dare if you can. Is that the saying, dare if you can? Uh, dare, I think dare if you, if you well, will, dare you if you try. Yeah, I mean, we get the emotions behind yeah. it that he should, <laughs> he should play with you. And uh, one more thing. Sometimes people on the internet think I'm a cheater. Mm -hmm. And I think I need to make it clear. I cheat on purpose to make you think that you cheat because I think it's fun. Like, when I remove the rook. So, um, chess is a mind game. So, I don't know what was the connection to this. It was completely <laughs> random. I, I hope you, you can edit things because sometimes there's, yeah, mm. sometimes there's not so much logic into Fantastic. Well, Dina, through this video, I got to know you better and I'm sure the viewers as well got to know you better. And uh, it's uh, very nice to see you at uh, this Prague Chess Festival and I hope that you travel to more events and, and do this, what you are doing. Uh, would you go to Reykjavik now? Yes, absolutely. We're going to Reykjavik and uh, we're going to do just the same thing. And I am excited to be back to Reykjavik because I want to take down even more GMs. Um, but once again, a huge thanks to organizers of Prague Open. It was a blast and I really want to come back next year. Thank you, Dina. Thank you, Sagar.